Hi, what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? Welcome here today to another episode of the Just Ballin' Podcast. Today, we are gonna be doing our first mock off-season, off-season preview here. We are gonna be taking um, control, or at least talking about a team that I feel like hasn't been uh, having the luxury of talking about a lot since they don't own their first round pick, which ended up being number three, and that's gonna be the Brooklyn Nets, a team that has some big decisions to make this offseason, and we're gonna just be going through kind of their cap sheet, their draft pick situation, what I think they should do, some targets they can go out and get this offseason and what this team could potentially look like going forward, um, not just in 2025, but how they could probably set this team up for long-term success going forward. Um, and if you guys do enjoy these um, on YouTube, you can let me know in the comments what you think of this. And um, if there's any other team you guys want to see me do next with this, please let me know. Drop a thumbs up as well. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, appreciate a rating or review if you guys do enjoy these as well. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, this will be uh, the first part or you, like the first section of a podcast um, and my top 15 big rankings uh, for the 2024 draft will be the other half of this pod. But if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to make those two separate YouTube videos. So um, the Brooklyn Nets in 2024, they finished with a 32 and 50 record. They were 11th in the Eastern Conference. They finished 23rd in offensive rating, 28th in defensive rating and 22nd overall in net rating. They fired Jock Vaughn, their head coach after 54 games, going 21 and 33. Kevin Alley, the interim head coach, went 11 and 18 um, in the final 28 games of the season. And this team was led offensively by Cam Thomas, which was kind of surprising. The 22-year-old led the team in points. Uh, he had 22 and a half points, three assists, three rebounds, shot 44% from the field, 36% from three. Mikel Bridges had kind of an underwhelming season as the number one option. If you look at like most improved player odds going into last year's season, he was high up there. A lot of people thought he was going to break out as the true number one option on this Nets team. He finished with under 20 points per game, scoring at 19.6, four and a half rebounds, three and a half assists, shot 43 or 46% from the field, 37% from three, um, and 81% from the line. Still a solid defender, but I think just lacked that confidence you'd have in a number one option running that half court offense. Maybe just wasn't getting to his spots when you are guarded by the team's best defender out there as well. Uh, they picked up Dennis Schroeder at the trade deadline, sending uh, Spencer Dinwiddie over to Toronto. Uh, he averaged around 14 and a half points on the season, 42% from the field um, in about 29 games for the Nets. Cam Johnson, another big piece they got in the Kevin Durant trade, 13 and a half points, four and a half rebound, shot 39% from three. Maybe not as aggressive as you would have liked for someone that got that massive contract extension for his caliber of player. Um, play style last offseason. Spencer Dinwiddie, like I said got moved he finished with 12 and a half points nick claxton their big 2024 free agent unrestricted free agent since he was a second round pick he played 71 games still 24 years old averaged 12 points 10 rebounds um over two assists tonight two blocks tonight as well and shot 62 percent from the field i liked what lonnie walker did this season maybe wasn't consistent throughout the full stretch of the year appeared in 58 games but i thought for the veteran minimum they did a good job evaluating the talent there dorian finney smith um, bounced kind of around from the starting lineup um, to out of it, and he was inconsistent with his shot. Still a fine defender, but eight and a half points, four and a half rebounds, a blow average shooter. They really should have traded him back in 2023, when apparently they could have gotten two first round picks for him. Uh, Royce O'Neal was fine for them, and then he ended up getting flipped at the deadline. Uh, we didn't really get to see much out of their rookies. We didn't get to see anything really out of Derek Whitehead. Um, and no Clowney appeared in some games towards the end of the stretch, and hopefully can use that momentum going into next year. Ben Simmons just appeared in 15 games. Um, Darren Sharp, honestly, I thought was a fine backup big, appeared in 61 games. Um, and Dennis Smith Jr., honestly, played pretty hard on defense. He appeared in about 56 games. So, uh, yeah, that is pretty much what the Nets were last year. Not a very exciting team whatsoever. They were mediocre for most of the season they never really flirted with a playoff spot uh and cam thomas had some really encouraging games but then there's some games where he's going to shoot you out of them and it's like can he really be a number one option and it's there's going to be some big decisions to make for the nets this offseason so they've about committed of 133 million dollars that's a lot of money for a team that just went uh, uh won 32 games um and that's for next year if you basically just don't even bring back Nick Claxton, the salary cap is roughly $141 million. So if they let Claxton walk, they pretty much only have around $8 million to spend to be under the cap. The luxury tax is at $171 million, so they don't really have to worry about going over the luxury tax, even if they bring back Claxton, unless he makes $40 million a year, which I doubt happens. Uh, they have Nick Claxton as a free agent in 2024 um, this offseason. Dennis Smith Jr., Kita Bates-Diop, Lonnie Walker, Keon Johnson, and uh, Harry Giles. 
Um, and this team basically has $40 million committed to Ben Simmons next year. So it pretty much handicaps them on what they could do in free agency. Cam Johnson got that extension last offseason. He'll be making $23.5 million next year. And then it does descend all the way. Um, well, it goes down to $21.5 million in 2026, then back up to $23.5 million in 27. Um, Mikel Bridges, still one of the better contracts in the league. $23 million next year, $24.9 million in 2026. I also believe he's extension eligible this offseason. I doubt that happens though. Dorian Finney-Smith is owed $14.9 million next year and then has a $15 million player option in 2026. And if he replicates what he did last year, it's a little bit of an overpay for Dorian Finney-Smith. Dennis, Sh uh, Dennis Schroeder is owed $13 million next year. That's why kind of Toronto wanted to get off of uh, uh, Schroeder's contract since it was a two-year deal and Dinwiddie was just uh, an expiring contract. Cam Thomas from the 2021 draft class making $4 million next year. He's also extension eligible this offseason. I'm sure a lot of his counterpartners are... Uh, are uh, I guess, colleagues from the 2021 draft. Guys like Evan Mobley will probably get extended. Kate Cunningham is going to get extended. Scotty Barnes is going to get extended. Shane Goon should get extended. Um, I don't know about Cam Thomas, though. We'll see. Daron Sharp, um, $3.9 million. He's from that 2021 class. They could try to snag him on a below market deal if they think he could have some jump. Like maybe it's like a Josh Green type deal if they're high on him being their starting center next year. Noah Clowney um, is under contract same with Derek Whitehead. Uh, Gator Bates Diop does have a player option this offseason. And then Jalen Will uh, Jason Will or Jalen Wilson, geez. Uh, Kansas Jayhawk honestly played fine for the limited playing time he had last year. Uh, he 24 years old, he's due 1.8 million if they fully guarantee his contract. Yeah, um, like I said, Mikel Bridges and Cam Thomas are extension eligible. I doubt either of them gets one because Cam Thomas would just be a restricted free agent next year if he even outperforms his deal. I don't think they're in a rush to extend him. And Mikel Bridges, they gotta figure out where the direction of this team is going. Their draft pick situation, uh, it's it's weird. It's definitely unorthodox. So they own the third overall pick, or they, excuse me, they don't own the third overall pick in this year's draft. That is going to Houston, back from the James Harden trade, and they own zero second round picks. Not great. Uh, in 2025, they have a swap worst with Houston. So if they end up with the worst record in the league and Houston ends up with the best record in the league, they are getting the 30th pick in the draft and Houston is getting the number one overall pick in the draft. Not great. They do own the Suns unprotected first rounder, which I doubt is in the top five next year. I would like to still think that the Suns are going to be in the playing tournament at the bare minimum. Um, in 2026, they don't own any of their first round picks. They don't own any other team's first round picks. Houston owns it outright. That's a draft with AJ DeBanza, Cameron Boozer, Caden Boozer. Yeah, not great. Uh, looking forward. In 2027, they own uh, a swap worst again with Houston. So if they end up as the worst team, Houston uh, as the best team, they aren't getting the number one overall pick in the draft. Uh, they do own the Suns unprotected first in 2027. And with an aging Beal and KD, that could be valuable. Um, they own Philly's top eight protected pick in 2027 from the James Harden Ben Simmons trade. Uh, in 2027, um, it's a swap best between Phoenix or Philly. If that Philly pick is top eight in 2027, if they do get Philly's pick outside the top eight in 27, um, it's just basically uh, a swap best with Phoenix. So Phoenix ends up as the worst team. Nets are the best team. They'll get the number one overall pick in the draft. And then in 2029, um, it's probably their best year. They own Dallas is unprotected first, their first round pick and Phoenix unprotected first. Yeah, uh, it's, it's weird. It's weird for a team that doesn't own their draft picks outright to be this mediocre. Uh, their projected depth chart for the 2025 season, just guys under contract. Point guard, you got Ben Simmons and Anna Shooter. Not great. Uh, shooting guard, you got Cam Thomas and Derek Whitehead. I would like to see Derek Whitehead actually get ample playing time next year. Uh, I know he's been injury prone throughout his Duke days and obviously year one in the league, but I do have still excitement for or hope that Whitehead can be one of the best shooters from that draft class um, outright. Uh, and we'll see if Kata beats the up, picks up the player option. Probably should, but he could get a deal somewhere else. Uh, Mikel Bridges um, and Cam Johnson also listed at small forward. So solid depth there. Power forward, you have Dorian Finney-Smith, Noah Clowney, um, and Jalen Wilson. And at center, you have Dayron Sharp with the pending free agency of Nick Claxton. So pretty much the overall um, or just the overview of the Nets 2024 season and what their 2024 offseason could look like just with all the, um, I guess, draft pick and financials. So where the big question for the Nets is, where should this team go? Should this be a team that goes big star hunting? Should they try to go for Brandon Ingram? Should they try to go for Trey Young or Donovan Mitchell? Um, or should they try to just trade Mikel Bridges, trade any veterans they can, and really rebuild? Now, the problem with trading Mikel Bridges um, or Cam uh, Johnson or doing a sign and trade with Nick Claxton is they don't own their first round pick next year. That is going to Houston in a swap like worse. So they're basically going to get the least favorable pick there. 
and Houston is on the rise. They went 41 and 41 last year. I assume they'll be around the same record, give or take a couple wins. So I doubt that pick is going to be in the top 10. So you can't be relying on you and Houston picking in the top five. That is probably not going to happen the way Houston is looking. So you are running the risk of winning 30 games next year and losing out on a generational talent. In the 2025 draft, there are generational prospects with Cooper Flagg, Ace Bailey, Dylan Harper, Nolan Troyor, um, and just other good guys as well, like Hugo Gonzalez, Igor Denham, uh, VJ Edgecombe, Ian Jackson, uh, Trey Johnson. The list can go on of really high-end talent next year that all could be number one overall picks this year. So that is the last draft in which you want to give up a top pick. Therefore, I think it would be wise for the Nets to revisit that trade offer with the Houston Rockets. It's been reported that the Rockets said, we will give you all your first round picks back. So you get your pick back this year. Number three, you get your 2025 first back. There's no swap. You're going to get your 2026 first round pick back. So that's a valuable draft too. Like I said before, Dave Vance and Cam Boozer. You'd get that pick back. You'd get your swap worse in 2027. You basically don't own your first round pick for the next four drafts, including this year's. This isn't out, but you have to give them all of Phoenix's first, which is a um, which is their first round pick next year, which I don't think is going to be valuable. So then you're reliant on 2027, 2028, and 2029. Yes, maybe that first rounder is in 2029, but I, I don't really think it's worth it. Because if you are going to just go out and try to get a Donovan Mitchell, you are giving up all those picks anyway. So I think we can look at this offseason in two different ways. We could say that they go into the rebuild or we could say that they go into a competitive mindset for 2025. So to start off, we'll, we'll talk about if they were to do that trade with the Houston Rockets. Because I think if you aren't going to go out and get a Trey Young or a Donovan Mitchell, there is no point of running most of this team back, just re-signing Nick Claxton and having basically the same roster last year that won 32 games. And I doubt anybody is really elevating you. You're probably not getting a fully healthy Ben Simmons. You're relying way too much on Noah Clowney or Derek Whitehead to make immediate impacts. I don't think Cam Thomas, Mikel Bridges, Dennis Schroeder and Cam Johnson are leading you guys to an above 500 record and Nick Claxton as well. So I say what they should do this offseason is take that Rockets trade, man. You give them all of Phoenix's first round picks. You could still have that Philly first round pick in 2027. You could still have that first round pick from Dallas in 2029. You just give them all of the Suns picks. So that means you would end up with a third overall pick in this draft. And uh, we assume one and two is going to be Sar or Reese Ashe. That gives you a good spot to take a lot of different guys that can help contribute next year you could look at donovan clinging at three if you move on from nick claxton you could look on or look at reed shepherd who could be kind of a combo guard for you next year and can play alongside Schroeder and cam thomas at different times on the floor you can get nikola topic who could run this half court um and, and be someone that can develop throughout the season you can get Buzelis, you can get ron holland there's a lot of guys that would excite me about number three for this nets team that would look so much better on paper so i think what the Nets should do if they were to rebuild this team um, this offseason and you take those picks, I would probably look at Reed Shepard at three. Uh, I think he's someone that could be a really good complimentary piece to what they're eventually going to get down the line. Um, I think Bruzelis and Holland probably wouldn't have the best development system here in Brooklyn. Um, so I would look at Shepard or Nikola Topic. And I think if the Nets were at three, I would look at Reed Shepard. I'm not rel like relying on Ben Simmons to play more than 30 games next year, nor do I think he's going to be back in Brooklyn after this season. There's probably a chance he just gets bought out midseason, so they're just done with him entirely. So we could say that next year, like point guard, at least on paper, it's Ben Simmons for maybe half the year. It's Dennis uh, Schroeder. Uh, this is like the rebuilding route. And then for shooting guard, we could say it's Cam Thomas. Um... I guess we can actually put, yeah, yeah, because we'll put Cam Thomas at the two. We'll do Dariq Whitehead, or we'll do Reed Shepard, and then we'll do Dariq Whitehead. Um, or honestly, we could bump uh, Dariq Whitehead down to the small forward spot because we are getting younger with this team, which means if we are rebuilding this team, we are looking to trade Mikel Bridges. Now, there could be a plethora of teams that could be interested in Bridges. Maybe Houston tries to be like, you know, we're actually not doing this trade unless we're getting Mikel Bridges, which I'm like, you know what? Maybe that's a little rich to do that um, because I would like to now offshoot like bridges to get other assets out there as well um so you kind of look at teams that could be interested in mikhail bridges like utah's got picks san antonio's got picks um with sacramento trying to make a move with okc trying to make a move um i, I think so it's trying to it's like hard to predict where mikhail bridges could end up obviously it could be new york but if there's a chance where you can get three first round picks 
They don't have to be the best in the world, but three first round picks and a young player to insert into this lineup. I'm happy with that next year. And you don't even have to move Mikel Bridges if you don't want to. Like if you end up getting all those picks back, which is like, Houston is giving you an out. This is crazy. This is like a lifeline, man. You got to take this, I think, if you're Brooklyn. You don't have to move Mikel Bridges now. You can move him next offseason um, or you can move him at the trade deadline. Like he's under contract at a really good price, $23 million next year, and then $25 million um, in 2026. He would probably get a nice package even when he's an expiring contract in the 2025 offseason. But he's going to result like in you winning games. But tanking isn't what it used to be. You don't need to end up with the worst record in the league to get the number one pick. You can end up with the fourth worst record and be just fine. So I think it's hard to predict what a Mikel Bridges trade could look like, but I would slide him in to kind of the rotation next year. Um, but I think there's if there's an offer on the table, you definitely do that if it's like a team that has some draft capital for sure. Um, so I would look at Reed Shepard at number three. You look to get... Um, like your first round picks back in 2025 and then you can have your mindset on some other guys i would also look to move cam johnson as well i mean shooting comes at a premium there's maybe some bad contracts out there that you could take like i'm trying to think of like a team that would probably give up assets like would would memphis want to give up assets i mean there's also it comes down to the sign and trade with nick claxton could you do a sign and trade with memphis or okc for Nick Claxton, I believe OKC can just sign him outright, so that's really difficult. But I think I would look at a sign and trade with Claxton um, and a power forward. You try to move Dorian Finney Smith if you can, and I'm rolling in with like Noah Clowney and maybe ask that you get in return for Nick Claxton or Cam Johnson or Finney Smith or Mikel Bridges. Um, in center, I actually like Daron Sharp. I would see if you could sign him to an extension this offseason. See if he would take like seven mil a year for three years, maybe like a Nick Richards type extension as well, because I think you can really buy low on him, um, and especially if he's going to be the starter next year to go with that. So Claxton, though, is still very young. Um, I just don't think it's worth overpaying for him if you were going to be a bottom feeder, but hey, maybe you can eventually move him. I don't know if he wants to come back to Brooklyn, um, but I, I think that's fine. I think even if you do this trade with the Houston Rockets, you can look to bring back Nick Claxton going forward. You can look to bring back Mikel Bridges. You can run this team back, but then you can be fine with jumping into the lottery next year because you're actually going to get your first round pick. And in reality, those picks from Phoenix don't mean anything from 27 to 29 if you were going to consistently lose out on top end talent every year. So that is one route that I think the Nets that's the route I think they should do this offseason. We'll see how Joe Sy wants to run this team. And I, I like the addition I didn't even mention of Jordy Fernandez, their new head coach of this team. Let's go into a younger era of Brooklyn basketball, man, where you got to get further and further away of KD, Harden, and Kyrie because obviously it just didn't work out. Um, so yeah, we got now the idea that we run this team back and we make some moves. So if you're going to still go all in on a second star, you got to re-sign Nick Claxton. There is no point in going out and trying to trade for a big name if you are going to let Claxton walk and have such a glaring hole at the rim protector position. You have the matching salary to go out and get somebody that's good um, that could be a number one on this team and you can now move Mikel Bridges to the two. Um, and I think it really decides like what's going to go on with what's going to go on with Cam Thomas because I don't think I think Cam Thomas is probably more valuable to the Nets than he would be for other teams I mean this team could easily get to matching salary with the the Pelicans if they wanted to get Brandon Ingram you could throw in Cam Johnson um there could even be a Ben Simmons if they didn't want Cam Johnson but you could also do Dennis Schroeder and Dorian Finney-Smith and then you have one of Clowney or Whitehead or Sharp that could be in, uh, enticing. And then you obviously have all that draft capital. So uh, you could look to get uh, Brandon Ingram, but I think Ingram and Bridges have a similar style of play in the half court offensively. So I don't know if that would really make a ton of sense. Obviously, the Troy Young could make some sense, um, but you're giving up a lot of draft capital to do so. Um, I'm sure Atlanta would maybe want Cam Thomas because they could do Cam Thomas in that backcourt with DeJounte Murray. Um, so I'm sure you would maybe throw in Cam Johnson maybe Dorian Finney-Smith, um, and then those guys can get rerouted. And then you're basically gutting those Phoenix picks, which I think is really silly because I don't know the ceiling with Trey Young and Mikel Bridges on this team. And then there's obviously the Donovan Mitchell route as well. I mean, I think even going back to DeJounte, like the Hawks, like DeJounte Murray will cost you a lot less maybe only cost you one Phoenix first, one Dallas first, um, and just matching salary. And then maybe I would take that because Murray can help you uh, immediately next year. And you still get to keep most of the Phoenix first round picks, which are still pretty valuable around the league. So I would look into that as well. Um, Donovan Mitchell is the big name, um, or we could just kind of talk about Cleveland. Uh, you're probably looking at Mitchell and or Garland. Now, if you're going for Garland, you're probably including, I would assume it'd be Mikel Bridges in this deal. 
but why would you do that if you're going out and getting Garland? I just don't really think that makes a lot of sense. I would only do Mikel Bridges for Garland if you are doing that trade with the Houston Rockets because Garland gets you a little bit younger. He's 24. Bridges is 27. Gives you somewhat of a franchise point guard. He's under contract. And then you could add in those pieces around him throughout the draft going forward um, in other trades. And then you could still see what a Garland Thomas backcourt can do next year. I don't think it's going to do much, but I think it could be at least a little encouraging going forward. Uh, you can obviously do the Donovan Mitchell trade. That would probably have to be Cam Thomas, or I, yeah, Cam Thomas, Cam Johnson, Ben, um, well, probably not Ben Simmons. Maybe Dennis Schroeder's got to be in that trade as well. And then you do Cam Thomas, who is extension eligible. Man, I just, I, I don't really know like that option, man. I don't really like it because there's there's financial implications on that as well. Um, and then you'd get Donovan Mitchell. You'd have to probably give up most of those Phoenix picks to do so. And you would have to do this on a hunch or like a given that Donovan Mitchell is going to re-sign in Brooklyn, which I think is way too risky. And then you run a, you run a lineup of what? Maybe it's maybe it's Dennis Schroeder stays. It's Dennis Schroeder. Or I would probably put Donovan Mitchell at the one. So it's Donovan Mitchell at the one. It's, man, it's like Reed Shepard. No, no, no. It wouldn't be Reed Shepard because they're not getting their picks. It'd be Donovan Mitchell at the one. I don't even know what the two. Mikel Bridges at the two. Uh, it would be figure out your three. You have maybe, oh my God, Dorian Finney-Smith at the four, Claxton at the five. Yeah, I just don't like that. Like that is not doing anything in the Eastern Conference. That is not moving um, me at all. There are way better teams in the East. Boston, New York, Milwaukee, I think fully healthy. Uh, I think Philly would eventually be better than them. Indiana, obviously the season they had. Orlando's on the rise. This is an out. Come on, Nets. I would take the out with the Houston Rockets. After talking for the last 20-ish minutes, I think that's what the Nets should do this offseason. I don't really think it makes sense to try to gut this roster and the draft picks they accumulated in the KD trades to go out and get a big name when you could get in out and kind of enter a rebuild properly. I know you're basically trading Kevin Durant for all your picks back for the James Harden trade, which if you look at it like that, obviously it's not great, but you got to realize the James Harden trade was a disaster. You ended up giving up more future first round picks than immediate first round picks, which is kind of coming back and biting you. So I would just take that out. You can enter into a rebuild. You're going to have to see some poor Nets basketball, but at least you're going to have some young guys that you could play around and you can get even more draft picks if you decide to move Mikel Bridges, maybe Cam Thomas, Dorian Finney-Smith, Cam Johnson, and maybe a sign and trade with Nick Claxton. Um, this team wouldn't be good next year around whoever the third overall pick is and maybe that would stump their development which is something you have to look at as well and you want to give Jordy Fernandez at least something to work with next year but there's still at least some young talent that I like in Noah Clowney, Dariq Whitehead, and Daron Sharp and you can see what you're getting out of Cam Thomas as well along with the third overall pick and I'm not saying you will get a healthy Ben Simmons year but at least it's something to put on the floor next year I, I think I would roll with that option if it comes down to the two. But you guys can obviously let me know on YouTube what you guys think the Nets should do this offseason because I think it is a very unusual situation they are in and they have an out. They have a lifeline. Like This could be what it was 10 years ago after they made the Pierce KG trade where they didn't have an out and they just had a stomach losing top pick after top pick to the Brooklyn Nets every year. Those picks ended up being uh, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown who led them or is leading them to the NBA Finals this year. Another pick ended up being Colin Sexton from the Kyrie Irving trade. Um, so yeah, it, you don't want another repeat of that. Uh, I, I guess you do have those future picks from Phoenix, but who knows, man? They have Devin Booker. They have an owner that's willing to spend and willing to make win-now moves and go into the luxury tax. So I don't think we could be too reliant on those teams being bad in 2029. That is so hard to predict, but you never know because the Suns will not have their picks going forward either. So yeah, for you guys letting me know on, or watching on YouTube, you guys can let me know what the Nets think in the comments below. Um, and obviously you guys are listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you guys will be getting my top 15 bigs. That will be in another YouTube video. So let me know what you guys think.